dynamic influence, uh, dynamic influences uh, today. Would you say that there's a lot of dynamic influence in our nation? Amen, there is a lot of Amen, dynamic influence in our nation. I want to try to show you here from the Word of God some things. Uh, but I want to try to preach on uh, Genesis chapter 2, 25. Genesis chapter 2 uh, and verse 25. And then we're going to start reading into chapter 3 there. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 25. Uh, we know that the Lord had made Adam, uh, took Adam and he took Eve and he uh, took Adam, took a, a rib and made a woman. Uh, and in here, after he made them, verse 25, the Bible says, And they were both naked. The man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Uh, now you can look at that a whole lot. Uh, I don't believe nakedness between a man and his wife ought to be nothing to be ashamed of. I believe the Bible teaches us that. But when it goes beyond a man and his wife, then when the shame comes in there, okay. So just want to make it stop right there for a minute. And then verse chapter three and verse one, the Bible says, "Now the serpent was more subtle." Than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, uh, lest ye die. Let me stop right there in just a minute. Uh, Eve got her... Uh, she got her uh, uh, what the Lord said there second hand. She got it from Adam. Uh, if you look, read on back there, she wasn't created whenever uh, God told Adam that. Uh, so she got that. Adam told her that. Uh, and in the process, I don't know if he added that last part to it or not or what. Uh, but listen here. Uh, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes uh, shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Uh, and they heard the voice of the Lord God, and uh, walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The uh, woman which thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, uh, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent... Uh, beguiled me, uh, and I uh, did eat. And then skip down to verse 21 there. Now the Bible says, Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins uh, and clothe them. You may be seated. Fathers, we bow our heads this morning before you. We want to come, Lord, and try for a little while just to look into your word and find some truths. Uh, that'll help us, some things that'll encourage us, some things, Lord, that'll uh, help us through this walk of life. We do thank you, Lord, for loving us like you do. Thank you for saving our soul. Thank you for the uh, two we're going to get to baptize today. And uh, I pray, God, that you just bless that wonderfully. And, uh, Father, but help us in the service this morning. Help us preach you, Lord. I'd say nothing that I shouldn't, but everything that I should. Uh, help me to preach under the unction of the Holy Ghost of God, sir. And, uh, help me to preach the truths of thy word. I pray, Lord, you'd open our eyes this morning. And, God, that we might see uh, the truths of thy word. Help us to hear, open our ears, that we might hear the truths of thy word. And then, Lord, help us to open our hearts, we might receive the truths of thy word. If you'll do that, we'll show by our unworthy heads. We'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to preach this morning on the day... 
uh, that Satan talked Eve into showing her nakedness. Now, y'all stay with me this morning. You write it down somewhere if you want to. The day uh, that Satan talked Eve uh, into showing uh, her nakedness. want to deal with demonic influence uh, this morning and how that uh, a lot of things, uh, there's a lot of de dynamic influence uh, going on in our land today. Uh, and want to look at some of them today. But we want to look at it over in uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Bible says to try the spirits, uh, see if they be of God or not. So we know that there's many spirits out here. I uh, want to look at Satan this morning and his influence uh, and just what kind of influence that he has. The Bible says here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, says in the beginning God created the, the heaven and the earth. Uh, the Bible talks about creation there. Uh, we know that uh, in the beginning, uh, in the beginning I believe God uh, created the heaven, I believe He created the earth, I believe He created the angels, I believe He created hell, I believe all the creation was done uh, in this period of time. Uh, that we see here, uh, and we see here uh, that uh, that um, whenever we talk about Christ, I've heard some people say that Christ was a created being. No, he wasn't. The Bible says in John chapter one verse one uh, says, "In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth." Uh, and it says in John, I mean in Genesis one one says, "In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth." Uh, and the Bible talks about uh, over there when God started creating, He said, "Let us." Amen. So evidently, God had somebody with Him. Then you turn over to John chapter one. In verse 1 through 3, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, the Word uh, was with God and the Word was God. We all know that Christ uh, is the Word of God. The Bible says He was with God and He was God. It said all things that was created was created uh, by Him. Amen. Uh, so He couldn't create Himself, but you'll hear people out here say that Christ was a created being. Uh, some of the some of the religions that you listen to, uh, uh, the seven, uh, not the seven day Adventists, but the uh, Latter Day Saints of Jesus Christ, they they teach that Jesus and Satan was brothers. Uh, that they were spirit brothers. Uh, we know that to be a lie because of what the Bible says here. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We know that the Bible says that all things that was created was created by Him. Amen. Uh, so we know that he couldn't uh, uh, be him because we know that Satan was a created uh, uh, angel there. Uh, when did God create the angels? Uh, look over in Job chapter 38. Keep your Bibles with me uh, and, and handy and, and turn with me some places. Uh, book of Job there, right before the book of Psalms. Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38. In verses 4 and 7, here in verses 4 and 7, the Bible says in verse 4, Job is, uh, God is talking to Job here. Job has been questioning God. Uh, God tells us a little bit about the creation of the earth right here. Uh, God asked Job, he said, Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare it, declare if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest nor who has stretched the line upon it, whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof. Listen, he's talking about the creation of the earth here. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the what? The heaven uh, and the earth. Now we see here, God has created uh, the earth. Now who's present here? The Bible says, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Talking about the angels there. So we see that the angels rejoice uh, whenever God created uh, the earth, whenever God started creating man, listen, I believe they was rejoicing in heaven. But listen, uh, listen, also uh, jealousy and pride started in heaven also. Man. We know that Satan was a created being. The purpose of the angels, look over in Psalms chapter 103. Psalms chapter 103. And let's look at the purpose of the angels this morning. Psalms 103, chapter 
Uh, chapter 103 and verse 20. I'll get it right there in a minute. Ch uh, chapter 103 and verse 20. Look here. Here's what the angels, uh, the, their job is. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The purpose of the angels was to obey the Lord. Amen. Amen. The purpose of the angels was to serve the Lord. God had a purpose for making the angels. He had a purpose for making man. Listen, he didn't make the angels to have fellowship with them, but he made man to have fellowship with man. Amen. The Bible says that God walked in the garden in the cool of the evening. Listen, in the cool of the evening, he had fellowship with Adam and Eve. Amen. That is before they sinned again. Him. Sin entered into the picture and they could have no more fellowship with God. Why? Because they hid from God because they realized they was naked. Amen. That naked was spiritual nakedness also. Uh, spiritual and physical nakedness. Somebody said just physical. Uh, just uh, spiritual. Well, if it was just spiritual, God wouldn't have had to kill an animal to make clothes for them to cover them up, would he? <laughs> Amen. Uh, but the, their purpose was to serve God. Listen, what's our purpose also? Our purpose is to have fellowship with God, but our purpose is also to serve God. Amen. The Bible says over here in Matthew chapter 6 and Luke chapter 11 in the model prayer. Now I want to say something this morning. That is not the Lord's prayer. Amen. Amen. The Lord did not need to ask for forgiveness because he never sinned. He wouldn't have to say forgive us of our trespasses. Amen. But he was teaching the disciples how to pray. Listen, and in teaching the disciples how to pray, he said thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Listen, God had an order in heaven. He expected the angels to obey Him because the angels, because Satan rebelled uh, and He led a third of the angels with Him in rebellion. Listen, they have, they're, they're not welcome in heaven. Amen. Amen. That's a good message right there, ain't it? If we want to be welcome in heaven, we're going to have to do God's will. Amen. We're going to have to follow the Lord. We're going to have to listen to the Lord. There's many spirits out here that will whisper in your ear, though. Uh, listen, there's a lot of religious spirits out here that has nothing to do with God, and they'll whisper in your ear, uh, and they'll get you out of the will of God. Amen. If you ever get out of the will of God, you're a miserable person. Amen. Amen. Adam and Eve got out of the will of God. They was miserable. They was hiding in the garden from God. And you imagine that. We don't need to hide from God, but we need to run toward God. We need to draw nigh to God. Amen. Cleanse your hands, uh, ye double-minded, ye sinners, and draw nigh to God. Amen. Amen. We need to draw nigh to God. Not run and hide from Him, but the Lord taught us to pray, Thy will be done. The in earth as it is in heaven. The name of three of the angels, uh, of three of the angels are mentioned in, in the Bible. Uh, Michael, Gabriel, uh, and Lucifer. We see that uh, they were uh, the archangels. They were the top ranking angels. Uh, re turn over to Ezekiel chapter 28 for a minute. Ezekiel chapter 28, and let's look at this angel by the name of Lucifer, uh, the devil, that old serpent the Bible calls him. He has many names, but listen, he's an opposer. Uh, he's an opposer of those things that are right in the eyes of God. Ezekiel chapter 28, you need to mark that. This gives you a, a, a description uh, of old Satan here. Start reading at verse 12. He's talking, talking about the beauty, the wisdom uh, that Satan had. Uh, he was perfect in his beauty. He is full of wisdom. Uh, listen, the Bible says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Verse 13, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, uh, and the diamond, the beryl, uh, the ox, and the, the jasper, the, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was 
a created. So Satan was a created being, amen. Again, I believe he was created whenever God created the heavens, amen. Uh, I listen, uh, I believe he was created when God created the heavens. Listen, I, listen, I, I don't believe that God created Satan as evil. God is not the author of evil. Amen. He's not the author of confusion. Amen. And confusion has come from Satan from the day that he rebelled against God. Confusion has come in. We see it starting in the Garden of Eden here. Uh, whenever he confused Eve, you know. Uh, listen, when the devil starts whispering in your ear, if you'll let him whisper, he'll get you confused. Amen. He'll get you confused. Listen, the Bible says resist the devil uh, and he'll flee from you. You've got to resist him. Amen. Can't let him keep nibbling on your ears. Amen. Amen. He'll nibble as long as you let him nibble. Uh, he'll whisper things. Listen, uh, evil is a free choice, uh, is a free will choice of Satan. Satan chose evil over good. Amen. He, he chose evil over good. He cho Listen, he chose the wrong way over the right way. He chose to rebel against God. He chose to set himself up in a position that he was God, that he was better than God, that he was going to take the kingdom away from God. Listen, he started in heaven trying to take the kingdom from God. Guess what? He's still trying to take the kingdom from God today. He's still trying to steal souls away from God today. He's still trying to get men and women to rebel against the will of God today. Amen. 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 He's doing his job very well. Uh, the same as God gave the angels a choice, all the angels have a free will. Those still there today have a free will. They have a free will. They want to serve God or they can rebel against God. Amen. Same as me and you. We have a free will today. Amen. 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 We have a free will to do the things that's right or do the things that's wrong. Listen, when y'all got saved, y'all had a free will to either make the choice to accept Christ as your Savior or to reject Him. Thank God you made the right choice. We're going down to the river today. Uh, that's the evidence that you made the right choice. We're going to put you under as an old man and bring you up as a new man. You're already a new creature in Christ. This is just for the world to see and rejoice about. Amen. It ain't going to make you more saved. But it is going to help you in your Christian walk of life. Why? Because baptism is your first obedient step of following the Lord. That's doing the first thing He's commanded you to do. Repent and be baptized. Amen. You're making the choice to follow Him. Listen, you, listen. I, I know it's kind of scary probably going down there to the river and letting somebody, you're putting yourself in somebody's hands you know, uh, you're hoping they're not a kleptomaniac. <laughs> you know, they ain't going to put you under and keep you under. you got faith that they're going to bring you back up, right? I hope you do. Amen. That's you, but you got your faith. You're going down by faith, believing that, that, that the preacher is taking you down is going to also get you back up out of there. That's the way it is in life. You're going to go in some places, amen. You're going to go down, amen, but we have faith in Christ that Christ's going to get us up out of them dark places in our life. Amen. Got that, got that faith that he's going to get us out of them dark places. Listen, the angels have a free will. Man's got a free will. God give man a free will to make his own choices. Look over in Revelation chapter 12 in verse 9. I've still got a lot of scripture to go, so y'all stay with me. I'm going to try to get you out here in time for the baptizing. Revelation chapter 12 in verse 9. Look, look at this. Talking about Satan again. Talking about Lucifer. Look at him here. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. The Bible says in the great dragon. Talking about Satan there. That old dragon. Said the great dragon was cast out. What was he cast out? Cast out of heaven? Listen. Uh, uh, cast out. Listen. He still goes before God though and accuses us. Yeah. Amen. He accuses me and you. Especially when we mess up. I guarantee you. Man he pours it on. Lord, look at that sorry rascal. They don't love you. 
they loved you, they wouldn't be doing some of the things they're doing. If they loved you, Lord, now, now, now Lord, and, and listen, I guarantee you, if he ain't took you before the Lord, you ain't just ain't doing nothing to get his attention. Amen. If you ain't saved if he ain't took you before the Lord. If you're saved, he's took you before the Lord at some point uh, and told the Lord how sorry you was and how much you didn't deserve uh, God's love, how much you didn't deserve God's salvation. He's already Satan has already accused you. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. Amen. 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 He accuses you and me before the Lord. Listen, the Bible says in that old, the, the devil there, old serpent called the devil. And Satan, listen, the Lord put it in there pretty plain so we know who he's talking about here. Yeah. He said, which deceived what? The, the what? The which deceived the whole world. Yeah. Listen, I guarantee you every one of us in this room been deceived sometime by that old bird. Amen. He's whispered in our ears. Listen, he's conned us. Do you know Satan is a con man? I'll show you here in just a minute. It says, and his angels were cast out with him. He got him a following in heaven. That's what he's after. He's after a following. And he got a following. Do you realize he's got a following here on earth? They is people that is following the Satan here on this earth. Hey man, a lot of people, a lot of them don't even realize that they are following him. Do you realize, youngins, and I hope y'all don't do it, but if you play with these Ouija boards, you're following the devil. Hey man, it's satanic. You mess in, in these seances or whatever they are, where you sit around chanting, you call up spirits from the dead, you're playing around with the devil. You're following Satan. Amen. 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 And a lot are doing it innocently, not even realizing what they're doing, maybe because they've never heard. We've gotten our Baptist churches so want to tenderly wink around and not say it like it is anymore and not try to win people because we're afraid of running people off and we're, we're, we're trying to keep what we got and you know and uh, we don't want to say too much but I'm telling you what there's some things need to be exposed are you listening to me there's some things that be, need to be exposed because Satan is a deceiver listen and he's dragging he's dragging millions that are following him and don't even realize it amen Look here, uh, God uh, created Satan, but he didn't create him with it as evil. He created him as good. Satan chose to become a con artist. You know what he wanted to con? He wanted to con, uh, he wanted to con mankind. Or listen to me, you need to write this down somewhere. He wants to con you out of your relationship with God. Amen. 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 You say, but preacher, I'm saved. You may be saved, but you ain't able to get a prayer past the ceiling. Come on, go ahead. The Bible says that God can't hear your prayers if you hide iniquity in your heart. You just can't do it. He wants to con you out of your relationship with God. Satan does. Satan does not want you to have a relationship with God. Amen. Satan don't want, listen, Satan don't want you to have a relationship with your parents. Satan don't want your parents to have a relationship with your children. Satan don't want your grandparents, he don't want his grandparents to have a relationship with our grandkids. He don't want that. He don't like that. Listen, Satan don't want you to have a relationship with anything that has to do with godly things. And he'll try to con you. And he'll whisper in your ear, if you, as long as you'll let him whisper, he'll whisper in your ear and try to get you out of your relationship with the Lord. Y'all know what a con artist is, don't you? That's one of them smooth talkers. The, the Bible talks about a woman as a con artist, calls her honey lips. <laughs> Says, oh, honey lips. <laughs> Says, just honey just dripping off her lips, and she's trying to entice a man into fornication or into adultery. Amen. That's satanic. 
Amen. Listen, I don't care who I don't care I don't care whose grandma it's coming from, whose mama, whose daughter, or or, or, or whose husband, or or whatever. Listen, anybody that tries to talk a, a person into a relationship outside of marriage, Amen, is a tool, is a pawn of the devil. Amen. Satan is talking to them. Amen. I'm just telling you what he is. He's a con artist. Uh, I met a few cons in prison. You got to watch them, boy. Some of them sick, too. Some of them sick. I had one fella come up one time and want me to pray with him. And, and uh, he said, pray with me, preacher. I said, right now? He said, yeah, we's out on the yard. I had my, I had my little tray with my tracks and my candy dish in there. He said, yeah, pray with me now, preacher. I said, okay. He said, hold on a minute. He started calling me, and they gathered all around me. From, you, you know, I didn't know what they were going to do there for a minute. They gathered all around me. The guards couldn't see me. Nobody could see him. That, I was right there in the middle of that little circle. And some said, you better watch this fella. And I got to praying, but I held on to my basket. Because something told me that something just weren't right about this. You know, come find out. You know what that bird was doing? He'd get you praying, he'd be dipping in your candy dish. <laughs> he'd be dipping candy out of your bowl there. While you was praying, they'd be reaching in there getting your candy. Con artists, that's the way the devil does. The devil may come to you in some religious situation. Man, you feel all religious and everything. Uh, and listen, the devil, uh, listen, he's dipping into your candy dish. That rascal's like it. He's got a lot of pawns out here that he uses. Amen. Listen, the devil will the devil will use you if you let him. Amen. He'll use you as a pawn. If we'll let him, he will. Listen, he's a con artist. Dynamic influence is rampant in our churches. It is. Look at some of our music in our churches. Amen. Some of the music in the churches today, you could, listen, if you just put the church in a nightclub side by side, uh, and, and listen, you couldn't tell the difference in the music unless you got a screen up on the wall that's got the words on it. But, but if you just, if you're there, the, listen, the tone, uh, it's, it's seductive. Amen. A lot of the music today is seductive. A lot of this contemporary Christian music is seductive. Amen. It's got a seductive beat to it. That's why it gets the young people up to moving their bodies around. Amen. Amen. That's why they want to have a chorus show instead of a quartet. Amen. Amen. That, that, that's, that's, why, that's why they want to wire tight. That's why they want to wire the church the tight dresses and the tight, the, the tight pants so they can be up there. And it's seductive. Amen. I watched a video uh, the other day of a church, and I watched their young people up, and I watched some young man, and and he was up dancing around all over the church, skipping back and forth, and pretty soon had the rest of them up skipping. You can work up that flesh, Mister. Absolutely. Amen. You can work. Listen. You can get that flesh worked up if you're not careful, and you're in the flesh, and you're not in the spirit. Amen. Uh, our music, uh, dynamic influence in our Bibles, in our Bibles, it's dynamic influence. That dynamic voice says, I need a Bible I can understand. I need one that some things have been changed around a little bit so I, I can understand it, so it won't make me feel so, uh, so, so get me under condemnation. See, what, what they're doing, they're trying to get out from under the condemnation that the Word of God brings. Listen, the Word of God, the Bible says, it's like a two-edged sword. It cuts coming and it cuts going. They sin in your life. It exposes that sin in your life. Amen. But maybe if I can just find me another version, it'll the condemnation will leave. You know, maybe we can just take the pulpit out and put us a a little praise and worship team up here and take the condemnation out. 
See, that's what they're doing is trying to get away from the condemnation. Satan whispers and tell you, you don't need condemnation in your life. Yes, we do. Amen. If we've got sin in our life, it needs to be exposed. If we're not condemned about it, something's wrong with us in our relationship with God. Amen. 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 If, 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 if sin that's exposed in our life, listen, if it does not bring condemnation, something is wrong in our life. We know not the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God will pick out that sin in our life so we can get it right with God, so we can have fellowship with the Holy God. Amen. Amen. Uh, we see it in our standards in our churches. The dynamic influence. We've dropped our standards on some things. And, and I'm not just talking about just clothes. And I, I'm not one of these going to tell you you got to wear a certain kind of clothing. You know, I say you need to wear modest clothing. Amen. 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 You need to wear modest clothing when you come to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Listen here. Any other thing besides modesty is dynamic influence in your life. Amen. If you, listen, if you wear something, men or women, and you're trying to look hot, it's dynamic. Amen. Amen. But if you're trying to dress modest, that's godly. Amen. You know what they tell me today? I seen a thing on the other day. They said men are wearing these V-necks now. So they can show cleavage. That's what the thing said. So they can expose a little bit of their cleavage. Hey Amen. We've gone so queer in our nation. I'm telling you what. Expose our, their cleavage. I'll be honest with you. Cleavage I'll be kept for your husband. It ought to. Same thing men too. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to see your cleavage. I don't see you women's neither, but I don't see you men's neither. Do you hire? <laughs> hire shaking his head no. Uh, but it's coming in, it's creeping into our churches. Men and boys wearing these tight little old tight tight pants and uh, uh, tight tight t-shirts and you know so they can show their muscles off and stuff, bringing it into the house of God and uh, coming in for a show. Amen. Coming in to look hot, looking hot to the devil. Yeah. Amen. You write that down that the preacher said that. <laughs> Uh, and I'll, I'll tell it everywhere I go, amen. If you're not looking modest, amen, you need to, listen, modesty is of God. Hot is of Satan. Amen. You need to look hot. <laughs> you know, you need to look modest. Amen. All of us. And I'm not talking about telling you what to wear. I'm not talking about pants or, or, or none of that. Sometimes a pair of pants on a woman be a whole lot more distant than some of the dresses that we see in our amen. churches today. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about shorts. Sometimes a, a pair of shorts down here. I'm going to show you here in a minute where the Bible talks, what the Bible says about nakedness. But a pair of shorts down here would be a whole lot more decent than a short dress up here. Amen. 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 Stay with me, okay? <laughs> Stay with me. We have this crowd today. They say, come as you are. Most come as they are and leave as they come. Then come back next Sunday just like they was. Or someone. They say God sees your heart, not your body. Y'all heard that, ain't you? God sees your heart. He don't see your body. He don't see what you wear. Well, according to Adam and Eve, he saw what they was wearing. The Bible says that Adam and Eve, they made them fig leaves. I imagine if you want to know what the fig leaves looked at, just go down to the beach. During spring break, especially, you'll see some fig leaves. Amen. Amen. I believe I'm still in the book, ain't I? Didn't it say they made them fig leaves? 
said they got them a fig leaf and tried to cover their cell. And God said, he, that won't work. God said, I'm going to have to kill a little animal. Most, most everybody in here is animal lovers, ain't you? Ain't you? How would you like it if they come to your house and got your little dog or your little cat or, or your little lamb or your cow or they you got cows? It'd take a cow for some of us to cover us, but, uh, but, a, but a cow. How would you like it if they come out and got your little dog so, you, so they could kill it to cover this bird over here, cover their nakedness? God had to kill a little lamb. Little animals, so he could cover Adam and Eve's nakedness. Because they was naked before God. Amen. And they know they was naked because they run and hid. They was having fellowship with God. They was communicating with God. But now they're naked. Listen, got on them little fig leaves and still can't have fellowship with God. God said, I got to do something so you can have fellowship again. Amen. Listen, Satan come in. He whispered in Eve's ear there. Uh, and told her, you know, it don't really mean. Folks say today, God sees your heart, not your body, or what you wear. Turn over to Exodus chapter 28. Let me show you a little bit what the Bible says about nakedness. Not my opinion, but what the Bible says about nakedness. You, you need to mark this and write it down. Exodus chapter 28. And I know before, before I get through, Satan's going to pop it in your head. Well, now that's for the priest. Okay, so i got some more Bible for you over. Has everybody got it? Everybody looking at it? I want you to read it. For, read it with me here. Uh, in Exodus chapter 28, start reading at verse 2. The Bible's talking about the garments that the Lord's making for the priest here. He tells them how to make the garments for the priest. And, and in verse 42, he says, and he's talking about the priest, okay? Uh, so so uh, this is where a lot of people get it that women shouldn't wear britches. Shouldn't wear britches. And, and they some folks, are, listen, they some folks that's hung up, they some folk way on this side of, of being so naked, and they some on this side so far of, 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 of what you got to wear. Am I making any sense to you? I believe you ought to get where God says and listen to what the Bible says where it talks about modesty and it talks about, uh, it talks about nakedness. Listen, this is what the Lord said about nakedness here. He said, Thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness. And this describes where the, late, the nakedness is. Now what does it say there? From the what? From the loins. Now somebody tell me where the loins are. Help me out here now. From right here, this the loins up in here, huh? Loins be right from right here, from your belly down. That be your loins, right? Am I correct? Am I correct, Billy Brown? Y'all look at me awful funny. What? And I believe it was, I believe it's right in here, the loins. This is your loins right here. This is your upper thighs. <laughs> Preacher, you shouldn't do all this. I believe our problem in our church, a lot of churches, a lot of our young people, they never heard it. What nakedness is. This is your loins. It says from your loins were. Read that for me, Dwayne. What verse is it again? 42. Verse 42. Chapter 28. From the loins. From their loins. To their thighs. Where's the thighs in? Right down here? Is that right? I'm telling you what the Bible says about nakedness. 
what the Bible, what it, how it describes nakedness. Now, that don't mean women can run around topless. <laughs> that don't, it was talking about men there, about covering their nakedness here. Men have different parts than what women has. I'm not trying to be vulgar. I'm just trying to put it to his plain this morning. Women have different parts than what men, uh, what men have. And it was talking to the priest right there. Somebody says, well, preacher, that's talking to the priest. That's Old Testament. That don't mean us, does it? Well, hold on just a minute. Turn over to the book of Revelation just a minute. Book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to dress. You dress, you, you, you and God work that thing out. But I'm just telling you the day Satan talked Eve into showing her nakedness. Satan talked her into showing her nakedness. Are you listening? Amen. They were naked. It was just her and Adam. But listen, it wasn't wrong. But whenever she started showing it, when it become visible to the public. Does that make any sense, y'all? L- listen here, Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Listen, uh, verse 5 talks about those that, uh, uh, it says, unto him, the last part of it, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in what? His own blood. Now read the verse below that and tell me what he's made us. Read that again. And has made us kings and what? And priests. That's talking about male and female. Amen. That's talking about boys and girls that saved, washing the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says He's made us kings and priests. Now listen, if God expected something out of His priests in the Old Testament, don't you think more than ever He expects something out of His priests in the New Testament that's been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ? Them old priests was just, they weren't even washed in the blood of a lamb, but they sacrificed the blood of a lamb. Their sins was rolled back year after year. But here in the New Testament, under the grace of God, under the cross of Calvary, we've been washed in the blood of Jesus Jesus Christ, don't you expect that God expects something out of His priest that's been washed in the blood? I think so. I would think so. I think He'd expect us to cover our nakedness same as He expected the priest in the Old Testament to cover their nakedness. Amen. If God wasn't pleased with Adam and Eve's nakedness, He's not pleased with the nakedness of this world today. He's not, he's not pleased with the nakedness of His children. And again, I'm not way over here. I'm just telling you, 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 you find you a place. And, I, and again, I'm going to fall out with some over here, and I'm going to fall out with some over here. Some are going to say, you're under the law. Some say, you ain't strict enough. We're talking about dressing. I've had people come in this church and all they wanted me to preach on was women wearing pants. How about us just preaching on women dressing modestly and men dressing modestly too? Men not wearing a pair of pants so tight with your skull can sticking out the back of it or it's wore it out. Amen. Amen. Just wrong for a man to... Uh, to flaunt his body as it is for a woman to flaunt her body. Amen. Amen. And I'm not preaching on that. I'm not even preaching on wearing shorts. Amen. But I am saying, if you're going to wear them, wear them here. If you girls are going to come up to church on movie night and, and things, don't come in with a pair of shorts on up here. Put on something that'll. Am I all right? Put on something that'll cover you modestly. I'm not talking about dressing where you feel like a like a stuffed turkey or something, or where you feel. Or where, I'm not talking about all that. I'm talking about just dressing modestly, covering your nakedness. 
Amen. Listen to the Lord. Don't listen to the devil. Whenever, listen, that young person that'll come along and try to talk you into doing dope or try to talk you into doing something y'all don't do, you know who's whispering in your ear? It's Satan trying to get you spiritually naked before God. Amen. Need to listen to the voice of God. The Bible says we become kings and priests. I've got to hurry. Kings and priests. There's more nakedness on display publicly today than you used to see in the burlesque show not many years ago. Not many years ago. I remember about 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, there's a burlesque show come through Old Fort here. Parked right over in that field off Parker Padgett over there. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all ain't old enough. There's a burlesque show. Y'all know what a burlesque show is, don't you? A burlesque show is a strip club. <laughs> it's a traveling strip club. <laughs> traveling strip club. <laughs> See, y'all young. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all know what I'm talking about today, though, don't you? Ain't no different. Except then, they had on more clothes than what most have on today. Amen. That's how far Satan has led us down this road here of exposing our nakedness. Listen, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 15. I'm just about through. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 15. Let's read what it says here. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 15. I'll show you what we've lost today also. A grown man would go to a burlesque show, a lot of them, would, their face would turn red. At some of them shows, they still blushed. We've lost our blush today. Amen. Would you agree? Amen. We've lost our blush. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 15, look at what the Bible says. Talking about Israel here uh, and, and, uh, and their sin. It, it describes us too. It says, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall away among them that fall. For the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. The Bible said there come a time when they couldn't even blush. And we're living in that day too when people's lost Amen. their blush. We've lost our blush today. We've become so accustomed to it and so used to it. And, and a lot, listen, a lot of young people think it's the norm today. They do. They think it's just normal. They, and, 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 the, and the blush is gone. You, people used to blush. Grandma used to blush, showed her ankle. Some of you older folk know what I'm talking about. Am I right, Mickey? Show a little bit of the leg. And some and some men they turn around. But we become so accustomed to it that we think it's the norm to show our nakedness and to lost our blush. We think a lot of this stuff's going on today. It's Satan has whispered in our ears. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You know God loves you. He'll take you just like you are. And He will. Don't listen to what them old folks say. They're just old fogies. They don't want you to have no fun. So y'all young, y'all remember it, don't you? Your grandpa just don't want you to have no fun. That comes in your ear. That's a devil. Yeah, that's that's old fashioned. You know. Yeah, that's old fashioned. You know, they're, they're gonna make fun of you. You go to school dress like yeah. You go to school that dress down to your knees, or your your pants not so tight. And the other kids, they're gonna make fun of you. They're gonna call you a goody two shoes. And, I mean, he just whisper all kinds of stuff in years. He did Eve. God really don't mean God really didn't mean that. Yeah. 
That's what we're hearing today. God don't care if you don't preach the plain truth. You know, skimp a little bit on it so you won't make people mad at you. You know, so you won't hurt no feelings. And you, you know, it won't hurt just to twist it a little bit or just leave it out. Don't even mention it. Don't preach on that today. Preach on love. Am I right? Amen. Satan is slick. And he'll whisper in your ears. I'm fishing up, I promise you. Uh, when a person gets saved, I believe they want to cover their naked. I'm going to show you how, it's, how it goes. Turn with me one more place. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which you have a God, and you're not of your own. It says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And then in Luke chapter 8, we know the story. You need to write this down here and go back and look at it. Luke chapter 8, and I'm going to finish up right here. I'm going to show you that, it, that it's how that Satan has a dynamic influence. I don't believe, I'm going to show you how the animals... The animals, how they don't even want Satan around them. How they'll kill themselves before they'll let, how, before they'll let a, a dynamic influence in their life. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 8 there. Now I'm closing, I promise you, right here in just a minute. If I'm finding Luke chapter 8, we, know, we all know the story of the, of the, of the, of the maniac here. Of Gardenia, starting with verse 26, talks about the, arriving in the country of the Gadarenes. Then it says in verse 27, says and when he was when he went forth to to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils a long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Now, if you read in another place, there the Bible says he cut himself. He took and he cut himself. Y'all have heard of what they call cutters today? Yeah. People try to inf inflict. They they feel like it. They're 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 they're. Re, they're I don't know what they feel. They're repenting of their or something. They, they 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 feel like that they deserve to cut themselves. The Bible says that, that here that this man, if you read it in the, in the other chapter in Matthew and Mark, it talks about how that he would cut himself. But he was he was in the tombs and the Bible says he wore no clothes. He was naked. He was demon possessed. Wow. Amen. Talking about demon possession and demon influence. Listen. Listen. Nakedness has to deal with demons. Says he wore no clothes. Says he cut himself. There's a lot of our young people today, when they go out and get these tattoos, you know who's whispering in their ears? Yeah. It's dynamic influence. Listen, I've got one on me, but you know, you know who whispered in my ear to get it? It was dynamic influence. That don't mean I'm lost. It just means I listen to the devil. I listen to Satan. Listen, did his bidding, does that, does that, does that, I'm going to tell you what, I'm ashamed of it now. I am. When I when I go out, if if I forget and put on a long sleeve shirt, I am self conscious of that. Especially when young kids say, "What's that? Is that a tattoo?" I'm telling you what, Satan will start influencing them real young about marking their bodies up. Whenever they're little, and they're babies, and they put these little patches on them. And talk about their tattoos. Listen, it ought to be the same to you parents and grandparents as them picking up a beer and carrying it around. You let them carry around a Budweiser, they'll probably be drinking a Budweiser when they get older. Now I'm telling you, I'm just preaching straight to us this morning, telling you that the devil, Satan, has influence. Listen, dynamic presence is, is, is thick in our land today stick in our land today. Amen. It may just start with one, 
Did y'all see that boy, that boy, that street boy that killed that old man over yonder? Did you take a good look at him? He was covered probably from down there to up to here. And he probably just started out with one, just not a bad little boy. But the more you let Satan whisper in your ear, the more that dynamic influence is going to take over your life. Amen. 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 Am I right, preacher? Amen. Amen. I got one. <laughs> it is, folk. I'm just telling you, it is. Same you let him talk you into drinking a beer. Next thing you know, it'd be two. And then three. Next thing you're a slobbering drunk. Amen. Next thing you, I've got a boy. I'm gonna get to come to uh, preach. I met him. I met him this week at prison. Met two. I met one play the piano. I'm trying to talk him come in and help us play the piano. And he gets out. What boy can tinkle the keys? <laughs> He's a good piano player. But there's another boy I met went into prison with us. His name is Jimmy Rowe. If you ever listen to Unshackled on the radio, his story is on Unshackled, the Jimmy Rowe story, talking about how that. He got on cocaine and he got on these drugs. And then how that he started stealing from his mama. And how he stole from his kids. How, their, how, his, how his wife and his daughter would have to sleep with their pocketbook under their pillow of a night. It just started down here. The devil whispered one little snort. Just one little, one little puff ain't going to bother Man, I could go on and on and on. So much of it out here today. I'll tell you what, our, our land is our land is infiltrated with demons today. Amen. Amen. Bible says try the spirit. See if it be of God or not. Go over there and get you a little shot. You know a little wine's good for your belly. Well, Devil, let's go in here and see what the Word says about wine. Said wine is a mocker. <laughs> let's go see what the Bible says about it. You know, just you just you cheat on your wife one time. Let's see what the Bible says about it. it says ye adulteresses and adulterers. Amen. The Bible's got an answer for everything. When the devil whispers in your ear, amen, take him to the Word of God like Jesus did. Listen, our Savior was up on the mountain, and the Bible says he had been fasting 40 days and 40 nights, and Satan took him up on a mountain. He said, look down there. He said, you can have all that down there. You'll just fall down and worship me. Somebody says, well, he didn't have the right to do that. Well, read your Bible. He did. Because Satan, this is his property right now, but Jesus is taking it back from him. Are you listening to me? But Jesus is taking it back from him. You know what Jesus said? He said, just about, Jesus said it's written. You know, if you be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread, stop that belly from growling and rumbling, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written. We have the word here. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. It's written, amen. amen. How to defeat him. Amen. Satanic influence. It's in our land, I'm telling you. And a lot of young people are dealing with it today and don't even know what they're dealing with. That's the sad part of it, Hire. A lot of young people today are dealing with it and they don't even know what they're dealing with. When these things come in their life, when they're tempted for the first time to, to, to try a sexual relationship outside of marriage, and they say everybody else is doing it, they don't even know what they're dealing with. They don't even know how to deal with it. That's the sad part. That's the sad part. Amen. And we as parents and grandparents and church people and preachers, we, we all start doing our best to try to teach people about these dynamic influences out here. Say, so we don't want to mess with them. Listen, would you rather mess with them or have them mess with your children and your grandchildren and your nieces and your nephews? 
Would you rather just have a man of God stand up here and, and throw you out sugar tents or preach a word? And tell him what it is. Expose, expose them, them dynamic forces for what they are. And they're out here today. And young people, old people, all this writing going on in our land, you look across behind it. I don't care if it's the KKK or Grandma. Amen. I don't care if it's a KKK or a little old grandma out there, uh, it, 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 whatever she's wearing, and she's holding up a sign that says, let's all just get along. And she's out there in the middle of that writing. That stuff's satanic, friend, I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. But we need to really be praying about it today. I hope a message has helped you somehow this morning. I hope, hope you ain't got... Don't go off telling everybody I preach is long-winded. I just long-winded today. But I hope it's helped you. Amen. I hope it's to give you something that you can take and give to your grandkids and help them as they're coming up to see that some of these things you need to try the spirits. Write that verse down. Try the spirits and see if they be of God or not. Okay? Right. Let's stand. We're going to close out in all the prayer this morning. Ask everybody to come. Maybe you got somebody on your heart you need to pray for. Pray for that young man I mentioned Wednesday. Uh, pray that God would help him to get out and go home and be a daddy when he's a boy. Live for God with his life. All these others. Everybody wants to join me. Come on up. Let's close out with an altar prayer.